time out. Stop racing around the clock. Step outside and feel the magic and oneness of nature. Time out. If you have picked this card, spirit is calling for you to slow down a little bit. Just take, take some time out from your busy schedule and hustle and bustle of your everyday life. Chasing the clock and getting yourself all caught up in the illusion of time has been taking its toll on you, dear one. For so long you have been at war with time with statements like, I just don't have enough time. Spirit understands your hunger and desire to evolve as a soul and can see the blockages that stop you from exploring further. You see, the universe grants you your wish on a daily basis by ensuring you don't have time. Your words hold so much power and as such should be used wisely. Feeling as though you don't have time can leave you irritable, anxious, and drained. Recharge your body, mind, and soul. Step away from the stress of the ticking clock. Step outside the natural world. Smell the flowers. Enjoy the sunset and breathe in nature's beauty. Disconnect from the phone, computer, and TV and connect to nature's rhythmic cycles. Ground yourself by feeling the grass under your feet. This is the best way to unwind your energy and renew your energy and resources. By having this time out to unwind and reconnect with the oneness of nature, you will feel refreshed and renewed to continue your work with inner calm and peace. You'll find that by doing this, the answers that you seek will come and clarity and understanding will be achieved. An affirmation to say to yourself is, I am alive to nature's magic as I dissolve in the oneness of all that is. Associated Chakra, Solar Plexus, and the Heart. Open intuition. Seek clarification. Possible misinterpretations now. Intuition is the inner voice of the soul. Opening your intuitive channels and trusting the messages that we receive can be challenging in the beginning. Not knowing how to interpret these vibes can lead to confusion. For are you really listening or is it just your imagination? You, have already, you are already intuitive. Think about the times you have felt, heard, or just known about events or insights about others or places. Those gut feelings are your primary mechanism for this natural base instinct. It might seem daunting at first, but opening your intuition can be performed in a variety of ways. Being open and trusting is the start. Meditation and visualization or connecting to your angels or guides to assist in these processes can significantly increase your sensory perception and accuracy of vision. Over time, you may have always felt that there is a force guiding you in life. You may have had a near-death experience or had faced your own mortality abruptly. These moments can trigger a forceful opening that can be challenging to comprehend and understand if you've had no prior awareness of them. You may be experiencing unexplained headaches, migraines, or sinus complaints. This area around your third eye and crown chakra is currently stagnant or blocked and needs to be balanced. Right now, you must learn to decipher this internal guidance. You're receiving many messages but are misinterpreting their meaning. Focus on clearing your mind and resting your psyche, psychic antenna. Remain open to receiving signs and messages as you continue to build your skills using clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, and claircognizance. Keep an intuitive journal and record those vibes or promotions you feel you receive. Observe these moments without judgment. Reflection will bring your confidence in help you understand and configure your interpretations of symbols, signs, and verbal messages. Be careful of the shadow aspect of this card, which is potentially having misinterpretations, uh, some kind of disorder, or being manipulative, or someone being manipulative to you. Uh, Sacred Crystal is Lapis Lazuli. Angel Assistance is Archangel Ratio. Mystical Knowledge, Strengthening Sensory Abilities. An affirmation to say for yourself is, I am open, I am an open channel for my soul to seek its guidance. How teachable are you? Are you open to learning new things in your life? How high is your desire to let go of judgment, doubt, negativity, and self-sabotage? What are some of your favorite things to do? Is it watch TV, go shopping, play golf, drink, gossip with your friends? Are you willing to give those things up in order to create time to learn something new? Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? What is, your willingness, what is your willingness to really apply what you've learned? You might be learning many new things, but be resistant to change. Every time you begin to think, I already know this, I've heard it before, this doesn't apply to me, 
your ability to learn them diminishes enormously and it is at a point at this point you may become virtually unteachable without realizing it unless you apply what you have learned into your life you won't really know it this card is beckoning you not to only be open-minded but to take specific action towards change an action for this is to change to create change you need to start with something small like the way you pour your tea brush your tea something simple Eventually, you will change your habit. This builds confidence as you start working towards the big changes you need to make. In the next 48 hours, take a step forward towards changing some area of your life. This could be something small like buying a journal to write your dreams in or talking to someone about your transformation. Then every day, do something, even if it takes only a couple of minutes towards creating positive transformation in your life. Another thing you can do is ask yourself many times during the day, Am I teachable right now? Or do I think I know it better? People are the most teachable experience, the most success in their life. All right, so that was the basis of your uh, met of the message or the reading or the guides or the foundation in which you'll be um, moving through life in September or dealing with life in September or um, obstacles, uh, your goals, desires, whatever. This is the foundation this is the basis these are the guides these are the supportive energies helping you in the pyramid stay up right stay upright recognize the connection there's also a diamond here there's also a pyramid here and a pyramid there right so just see the clues here and see how this is, this is where everything stems from for you in September so you have a, a need to take a some time out by having an open intuition because um, you're going to be potentially very stubborn um, Aries in September because you're, it's like how teachable are you? Are you willing to listen? Do you think you know it all? Um, even if you do feel like you know, give it a chance to act like you don't know. It's not going to hurt anything to act like you don't know and go through the dance with somebody and then you know come out on the other side thinking well I learned a little bit or I learned nothing at all or whatever. It's still an experience either way, but give it a chance, right? Don't just shut it down right away and put up blockages or whatever because you're being stubborn and you're angry or you're upset or whatever it is. So that's why you probably need to take a time out and like go sit by a river or a stream or take a walk or do something to get out and open your intuition by seeking your own clarification and unification with yourself. Power over seven scorpions. Power to conjure lower vibrational forces. You're being initiated into the magic of conjuring. Tap power to affect lower vibrational forces through your own will and spoken word. You're guided to use this powerful gift with compassion and discernment, with mercy and non-judgment. You can then manage any toxicity in your life swiftly and with great effort. The Lay Isis teaches the art of conjuring, of being able to use will and word to gain dominion over lower vibrational energies. You must be careful to use this gift with compassion, respect, and love. Using words with care and firmness will bring great healing into your life. You are guided to become aware of the power of your words and to realize that you are, that they are becoming very effective as a healing instrument. The lady was able to cause the poison of seven scorpions to yield to her healing intent by naming them and dominating their poison. She did so out of compassion to save the life of a young boy. In this story lies the mystery of her conjuring art that is awakening in you. To name the poison requires careful and clear assessment. If you judge or resist really knowing it, you are unlikely to be able to accurately name and therefore gain power over the poison. If you stay curious, detached, and compassionate, your perception and ability to wield the power that comes with the ability to accurately name something will increase. The poison may be jealousy, resentment, fear, or guilt. It may be sh blame or shame, anger or possessiveness born of a abandonment or rejection in the past. It may be a poison that is sourced from within your own self or injected into your system from another. It could be an actual phrase or insult, a cruel childhood nickname or taunt, even said in humor. But that wounded the open body soul at the time. It might be a cultural poison, such as the sickness evidence in the, our cultural images of the feminine body that leads to distorted perceptions 
of ideal body image, hatred of our bodies, and disordered eating. The poison might be our own feel, fear of success or failure. It might quite simply be the ego in a dramatic endless spiral of suffering from which there appears to be no respite. Isis can help you heal and grow more powerful than any poison in your system or relationship or any toxic environment by helping you name it. Take ownership of the situation and make any inner change necessary so that you can either tr affect transformation of the situation or a transported or are transported from it by your changing vibration which then draws a different circumstance more aligned with your frequency. Conjuring and dom domination in this art do not occur by force. For enforcing against something, we are giving it power through our resistance. So being stubborn isn't the way. Our anger, or trying to insist on your way. The power to conjure in the healing mysteries of Lady Isis comes in compassionate realization of the truth. This oracle comes as bearer of promising tidings. If you have been t trying to heal an issue, you will become whole. You will gain wisdom and successfully integrate the spiritual lesson of your experience. Do not give up if you are trying to understand the situation or even if your life in itself and what it means or why it happened. This oracle guides you to ask for assistance from those beings that love you unconditionally to trust that the might and the insight and peace of the mind the freedom from the past that you seek is coming to you and you will feel empowered and capable of bringing about your own healing through clearly understanding the issue for you and speaking your truth about it. Your truth will be whatever it is in your heart. It might be a number of simple expressions such as love in me is greater than this pain or the love of the Lady Isis heals and absorbs this poison now, returning it to me as unconditional love. Life force energy. Energy, mana, aina, aina, the rainbow spectrum, bright white light, reiki, celebrating life, god force, optimal health, being vibrantly alive, thriving nature, conscious consumption, Eden, the body as a temple, bringing earth into balance, cell rejuvenation, the love of the land. What happens when we seek to maximize life force energy in everything we do? Toward the completion of this oracle deck, I was called to visit Hawaii. I heard it is known to be the last remaining part of the lost continent of Lemuria. I went with an open mind and was sincerely blown away by the incredible level of life force energy radiated there. I am an avid traveler and seeker of high vibrational places, but had never experienced such potency of the magic. The main inspiration of this art. In every cell of every bright green leaf, I could sense the songs of Lemuria in this pristine place. I discovered I had been dreaming of this place my whole life. The crystalline waterfalls, rainbow diffused skies, exotic flowers, and opulent plant life was so present that you couldn't help but see a radiant aura around everything. Ana Ana is a Hawaiian term for energy and sacred land. It seemed to me that Mana and Ana are one and the same. One day, when I was sitting on Red Sand Beach, I had a vision of an overlaying dimension that spanned our physical world. This overlay was the God Force, of the, or the Life Force, or in its purest form and highest vibration. The vision presented an array of objects familiar to this physical plane from lower vibrational concrete, processed chemicals and suffering imbued consumables, to the higher biodynamic earthly offerings and the vibrant lands that surrounded me at that moment. The experience of creating the depths of me, of my being, with the remembering that we can bring this beautiful blue planet back to its former glory, starting with our own temples and personal pieces of Eden. I realized that maximizing one's life force energy was the gateway to bridging heaven and earth by aligning our choices with this higher frequency. We will naturally create more opportunities to ground this somehow forgotten light when we know the joy of this life force within and around us and are vibrantly alive. We can't help but inspire others to choose the same. All right, so that was the second tier. Uh, this is pretty much representing what you can work do, what you can focus on, what you need to put your energy towards. So whatever you've been doing in, uh, in August. In September, you need to add a little more oomph and funk to the spiritual aspect of your life. Um, keep doing what you've been doing. You're fine. 
Don't stop, but take a little bit of time out. Don't stop everything and just go away forever and time out land. No. Take a little bit of time out. Whenever you have an opportunity and go into nature. Okay. Power over seven scorpions. Aries, you tend to have a natural power over what the card was talking about with poisons, right? You, you can it could be for good or bad, whatever you decide, right? But just be aware of that. Okay, of how you can use your energy to control the poison, not let the poison control you, right? Um, with an open intuition. See, right here's the pyramid, right? So time out, open intuition, understanding your power over poison. Or over, and not necessarily like physical poison, but like, you know, negative energies, lower vibrations, like the card was saying. And then over here in life force energy, right? All right, how teachable are you? Are you... Are you going to recognize and listen to the universe communicating with you? Um, do you have mentors or people teaching you something that you're trying to be um, stubborn about? You know, just listen and keep doing it. Even if you're like, I am doing it. Well, just keep doing it. Don't worry about it. You know what I mean? You open intuition with, you know, that it, it's going to eventually, it's like um, perfection, right? You don't, you're not... You're not going to do it perfect a hundred times in a row until you've done it over a thousand times. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like I think Bruce Lee said, I, I fear the man that practiced one kick a thousand times compared to a man who did a thousand kicks, different kicks. You see what I'm saying? Because that one kick was perfected because he did it over a thousand times. So he fears that kick versus the guy who knows a thousand kicks. Or a thousand punches or a thousand different techniques or a thousand different moves or whatever. He doesn't fear that guy. He fears the guy who knows how to do one thing really good, right? So with life force energy, recognizing how teachable you are and open tuition and nature, like go out and meditate. Take some time out a little bit, not a lot. Don't like waste your life away by throwing out everything you've been working on away because you, you're like, I need a time out. No, dude. Don't get carried away like you potentially have in the past. Be it, be the tune of sacred rapture. Let your true self be seen. Search for the deeper spiritual purpose and opportunity for healing beneath conflict and suffering. If you have been in pain, this oracle brings a message of a joyful breakthrough. Your soul is growing stronger and more able to have faith in wisdom than in judgment or doubt. Commit to your spiritual path and know you are making progress, even if things seem more difficult for a time. Know that any such difficulty is part of your healing and that you will successfully move through it. Trust in yourself. To feel that you are fully seen, loved, and recognized for who you are honors your true self. To be witnessed in such a state truly beheld in all of your uniqueness, quirky, quirkiness, vulnerability, and strength is deeply empowering. This is how spirit sees you, so when you connect with spirit, you learn to love yourself and others unconditionally become generous with your forgiveness. You are also less likely to be hoodwinked by your ego. You start to see yourself and others at the soul level. When we are beheld, the need to be whole arises. We need to bear witness to the sacred to acknowledge what is true, which means cutting through the fog of illusion, deception, and confusion with the clarifying knife of higher perception. This is the quantum power and pure vision. It empowers the viewer and also that which is viewed, seeing from a position of inner spiritual truth we look below the surface, which, is, which has alchemical potency to set healing in motion. What vision of yourself or others do you either cling to or free yourself from? How might your choice either encourage or impede your soul awakening? When life is tough, you can admire the courage it takes to grow. There is a compliment inherent in being allotted life challenges. If something big has shown up on someone's path, then the universe is basically saying that they are enough of a spiritual badass to deal with it. It's a vote of divine confidence. If you or another are battling something, you can choose to feel awe and respect, rather than fear and despair. Rapture is a state of intensely pleasurable joy that lifts one into communion with the sublime and the sacred. It's not only a personal experience, but also a transfusion of divine delight into the collective soul of humanity. This is the kind of joy that is generous, soulful, without reason or agenda, and delightfully contagious. It is a wake-up call. It shifts any stubborn clinging to negativity. It refreshes the soul and nourishes the heart. It reminds us that everything is okay. Rapture is the astonishment, the sudden intake of breath. 
in response to an inner realization of something beautiful and beyond description. It tears, it tears us out of our misery and despair and plugs us into an electric current of enlightenment. The darkness is cleared in an instant. A beatitude is a blessing, the highest blessing. The oracle of beatitude of sacred rapture brings guidance that the beautiful healing truth of spirit is your reality. All else is a nightmarish misuse of imagination by the ego. When you sense spirit at work in your life, totally trustworthy and having your back, you are seen clearly. When, you hopeful, when your hopeful heart feels empowered, you are in the zone of truth. Trust in those moments. Recall them whenever you can. Count all your positive moments and wins, no matter how inconsequential they may appear. Every one of them is a precious drop of divine nectar nourishing your heart. Allow yourself to see and be seen. Remember that even in the tremors, trials, and tribulations of human life, you are a radiant soul who is growing ever more luminous without, or growing even ever more luminous through the, vis, the wisdom. Compassion and strength distilled through those experiences that you've had. Look for the light beneath all phenomena, and you shall know the peace and love that is with all beings, always. All right, so the top of the pyramid, the top tier, is your higher self, God, universal consciousness, quantum physics, quantum physics um, of the unified field, the force, whatever you want to believe in, all that good stuff. So it's a co um, correlation or co co uh, not co uh, coinciding with the bottom two cards here and the diamond right here. So... An open intuition, the intuitive of sacred rapture, top and bottom of the pyramid of the the diamond, and the sides of the diamond here. What you need to work on, what you need to focus on. So you're kind of like if we take these away, well, you got pretty much diamond shape, and then these are just here to help support and understand a little bit more what's going on for you in September. How teachable are you? Take a little time out, meditate, open intuition. Poison, power of the seven scorpions, power to conjure, lower vibrational forces, life force energy, recognizing your place in the universe, be to a sacred rapture, like a, a rebirth or um, not resisting the new skin. And, and you like, you know, you got to pull that, rip that old skin off. Get, you know, you get caught on the rock and just yank it off or. You know, the new shell or whatever. It's like, it's like, um, coinciding with divine masculine and divine feminine in a peaceful harmony of universal connections. Hey, Aries, this is your October Oracle reading for 2021. Aries, October 2021. Trick or treat, mischief and play. Divination of the Ancients message for Aries, October of 2021. Fortune cookie, fortuitous. Divine Circus Message for Aries, October of 2021. Haven of Mass, or Maven, sorry, Maven of Mass. Sacred Rebels Message for Aries, October of 2021. Seeing the true you. Shamanic Madison message for Aries, October of 2021. 
Dreamweaver. Accessibility. Mystical Shaman message on October of 2021. The Vision Quest. 